Chaudhary Saab, all distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> I would first like to warmly congratulate Abhinav Pandya and Jusana's Foundation for creating an outstanding center for research in security related issues in this uh, fabled land of Maharana Pratap and Mewar. I was highly impressed by the superb presentation made by Chandrasekhar Sharma ji, who has researched into the background of Maharana Pratap and his great contributions as a leader, as a military strategist, a person who initiated this whole campaign of guerrilla warfare against the Mughals. And the point he stressed most importantly was what gave him tremendous strength, was the strength of his character and his commitment to the welfare of the people. I was recently reading a book on Sanatan Dharma, which was published by the Central Hindu College Banaras in 1916. The book says that it is the dharma of a leader, of a person who is ruling, the ruler, to attend to the welfare of all people in a selfless manner. Niswat, no more to say. What Chandrasekhar Sharma ji has emphasized, where governance goes off the rails, it loses its capacity, it loses its shakti. Adhyatmik, mansik, shalirik, because that flow stops from the divine and the almighty. And it stops because they have left the rails of sadharma. Purushad comes to an end. People talk about various things. They exchange great ideas, grand ideas. But practical implementation is seriously a deficit. I have often given the example, when you go to a restaurant, the cooks in the kitchen cannot say that we are serving very good food. It is the persons who come to dine in the restaurant who must say, we are being served very tasty food. We like it. Today what is happening is a lot of people who are cooks today, holding high positions. They claim we are giving good governance to the people. Ask the people. As Reverend Governor, as Chief Secretary Punjab for many years, I used to say every time a person goes to a government office, there should be an exit poll system when he comes out. You must ask that person who visited the government office, were you treated with honesty, with courtesy and with due discharge of relief if the power is vested in that officer. The government has vested him with power to give relief to the people, to, to serve them. If they are not being served, he must get a very poor rating. Because the persons who are supposed to be served are not receiving honest, courteous and efficient service. When we talk about all this problem in the security environment today, and all the speakers have talked about serious threats being faced by a country like India, which in history, India has never attacked any other country in the world. We have tried to live at peace. Our <coughs> philosophy is Vasu Deva Kutumbukam. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Sabka Balao. All our great leaders, spiritual leaders, what have they shared with the rest of the humankind? Guru Nanak Dev says, Nanak Naam Chardi Kala Tere Bhane Sarbat Da Bhala. Bulle Shah, the great Sufi saint, 
from the Islamic tradition. It's not that Islam is all bad, no. There are some who misinterpret Islam and try to give a political color, the color of violence, color of conquest, color of domination. They are giving their religion a bad name. The Islamic and Sufi tradition says, Bulle Shah said, Lakh ibadat kare je koi bane na kade namazi jab tak pyar na hosi palle rab na hosi razi Kabir Sahib said, Pad Pad Sab Pandit Hua Pandit Bayana Koi Dhai Akshar Prem Ke Padhe So Pandit Koi Paltu Sahib Ayodhya Ke Padhe Bhai Mahatma Thay Kya Kehte Hai Paltu Unchi Zat Ka Mat Koi Kare Hankar Sahib Ke Darbar Me Keval Bhakti Pyaar Guru Gobind Singh Abhi Baat Chal Rhi Thi About So Called revival of Khalistan movement in Punjab. I am surprised. Persons who claim to be true six members of the Khalsa, are they listening to the teachings, exalted teachings of Dasam Padshahi, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, whose Prakash Utsav we have just celebrated, 356 Prakash Utsav on the 9th of January this year. What does he say? Saaj kaho sun leo sabay jin prem kiyo tini hi prabh paayo. A prem or panduk mein kya mail aapas mein? Or when I was in Punjab, unfortunately, during the time of so-called Khalistan movement, what were these great people saying who had picked up guns? Dhoti, topi, jamuna paar. We will shift all Hindus from Punjab and create some sort of a political entity of Khalsa. According to the definition of Guru Gobind Singh, Khalsa is a person who has conquered his own mind. Kaam, Krodh, Loh, Moh, Ankar ke upar vijay praap karne wala Khalsa hai. Jis mein man ko saad liya, wo saad hu hai. Us ki avastha saad kiya Khalsa ki hai. And he says that if you act in a manner which is opposed to my definition of Khalsa, rest assured I will not be your protector. However, if people are willing to act in a manner which is against the core essence of religious teachings of Hinduism, of Islam, of Christianity, of Judaism, justifying violence in the name of religion, what can we do as peace-loving persons? We have to match their intention of de destabilization of violence by also picking up guns. It was not the choice. But when confronted by an enemy who is trying to attack you on false premises to disturb your peace, your safety, and to stand your ground. The Mughals attacked uh, the Rajputs in Rajasthan. I have read many histories. They were at peace. Just to earn their revenues and then fill their treasuries, they go for peace and collect huge booty for the treasury in Agra and Delhi. When they were attacked, people had to rise up in defense. I feel personally that a lot of the mischief is being done by persons who are misinterpreting religion. Even the Islamic faith, they are all talking about Allah, Khuda and all, fine. We all have the highest respect. Allah is just a name. It's a name like Rama, Krishna, the Lord for the Christians. Nothing wrong. But in that name to say that we will attack persons who do not take the same name of God, who do not worship in the way that we worship, that is totally unacceptable. It's a wrong interpretation. And I am of the view that since the matter has now had, has become a global issue of false interpretation of religion, giving it a false color, whether it was Maulana Maududi, the persons who 
also affirm and basically follow that kind of interpretation. It is high time. The global community of the United Nations must step in now and say that we are not going to allow religion to be used to justify violence anywhere in the global in the space. They must convene conferences of uh, religious leaders from all world religions and under UN auspices make them sit around the round table. Why should the Sunnis and Bahabis attack Shias? Why? Shias are part of the Muslim tradition, the Sufi tradition, because they have greater affinity to uh, the fourth caliph, who was very well known, and uh, Hazrat Ali, who was supposed to be, of course, uh, Muhammad Sahib himself has said, the only one who really understands my Quranic teaching is Hazrat Ali. They kept him away from becoming the caliph, the first, second, third, he became the fourth, he was attacked in a war in Basra, killed, and then his son Hassan and Hussein, about whom the Shia celebrate, you know, their Muharram, and are not celebrate but uh, have a time of mourning, how they were attacked and then slaughtered. Just because of those differences, to say that uh, they will attack their mosques and so on and not permit them to worship in the way they choose to worship, what kind of uh, Religious leadership is this. They are not Muslims. But who have asked you and given you the authority to declare whether their prayers are to be accepted or not? These are human intermediaries. It's God Almighty who has to decide whether I am going to accept the prayer of a Shia Muslim or a Qadiani Muslim or an Ismaili Muslim or not. Who are you? But on that ground, you find that Shias have been attacked in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in South Yemen, and uh, of course in uh, Syria and Iraq, wherever there are pockets, Hezbollah is in uh, Gaza Strip because they are Shias just being attacked by different elements, whether it's the Jews or the other people. So my one strong view is, which I wish to uh, offer here for consideration of the governing body of the Usnaz Foundation, United Nations must step in now and not allow wrong religious interpretations to basically completely vitiate the atmosphere of global peace. All that we are talking about, it's building up, it's increasing, Al-Qaeda, all these jamaat e islamis and other things. Somebody has to step in. And the correction can not necessarily only be made by weapons. It should be made at a thinking level. Why are you planting wrong ideas in the minds of people at an impressionable age, brainwashing them and then creating your forces for bomb attacks and the and all. Why are you doing it? So the people who are behind this are so-called the persons who are actually teaching people the wrong view of religion. They are not being contested and who will contest them? Either the countries themselves or the United Nations must step in. Call them to New York, call them wherever else you want to have a global conference. Ask them why the bloody hell you are doing it. But if they persist in giving wrong interpretation, and I would say in a country like India, if anybody is giving a wrong interpretation of religion and making it a justification to incite people to take up arms and violence against our peaceful Indian communities, in my view, Nobody will tolerate it for a single day. They should be taken under uh, proper custody of the government forces. They should be taken to a place where they can be mentored, asked to change. Because this kind of poisoning of the minds of people and then creating uh, basically groups of persons who are willing to pick up arms and attack others is not going to be accepted. Now in this role, the uh, second thing is that also sometimes other leaders begin to exploit religion for other purposes, political purposes and all, not to be allowed. 
Sanatana Dharma also says as a basic Siddhanta and principle, if you promote unity, that is a Punya Karma. If you do, go for creating this. Why? Because God is the final source of unity. And under our concept of Dharma, Arth, Kama, Moksha, Moksha means Atma ka Paramatma se Jurjana Milna to connect back with the eternal unity of the divine. Now, if that is the goal, that is why Sanatana Dharma says that in your actions, act in a manner which you are creating more unity, creating more peace, and thereby enabling people to connect their forces and eventually join with the eternal unity. So this is how they paribhashit kiya is punyapa. So we must also ask our leaders to make sure that being a part of uh, the culture legacy that we have from our saints, gurus, tapasvis, they must act in a manner according to uh, what the injunction of Sanatana Dharma is to promote unity. And we have to ask the people, are you feeling that they are promoting unity or disunity? The people have to be the judge, ultimately. You can't be a judge in your own cause. A plaintiff cannot go to a judge and say, decide my case in my favor. No. The principle of justice is, you cannot be a judge in your own cause. Somebody else has to be the judge. When I was in Israel as Commerce Secretary, I signed, we negotiated the trade agreement when we started our formal diplomatic and trade relations. I was told by them as part of security, how they have security in the street. Every single shopkeeper, he has to keep an eye on what is happening on the public street. Is there any activity which creates doubt that something untoward may happen? They have given those shopkeepers these uh, electronic wireless devices. You press a button, in three minutes, a counterterrorism team will come to that particular shop. Oh, sir, what did you notice? We noticed this kind of activity happening in the street ahead of us. This is citizen responsibility. And I think in one of the sessions, Abhinav was telling me that this point came up that if we have to have a better security, security environment in India, we must also have citizens who are wide awake. Anything being noticed which is likely to cause a security <coughs> problem in future, they must immediately notify the authorities. The administration also cannot be sleepy. They have to act very, very promptly. <coughs> I say a stitch in time saves nine. If they do not act promptly, Things will go out of hand. And many years ago, I met Gyan Chand Singhvi ji. He was a very well known Director General of Rajasthan Police. He was Director of the National Academy in Missouri, Police Academy, sorry, in Hyderabad. When I met him, and Punjab was just beginning to get into some difficulties in the early 80s and all, mid 80s, he said the reason why law and order situations are getting out of control in the field because the officers on the ground are not taking responsibility and you know timely action and are waiting for cues from superiors and from the political level. Should we act? Should we arrest? Should we do this or not? So that tomorrow they are not being put in the dock why you acted or did not act in a certain way. He said that is why situations go out of control. When I was in the field, we never asked our DIG, IG, we took action as the SP of the district and saw that the situation came under firm control. So what I am saying is that when information concerning security comes to people in the field who are responsible for administrative arrangements, they must act very, very promptly. My final suggestion has been that uh, firstly the UN must uh, hold a conference on global conference of religious leaders to tell them to sit in a dialogue and stop murdering each other 
on grounds of different interpretations of the same religion. And the second, there must be a global ban by the United Nations on making appeal to religion to create violence. Religion is supposed to be something which leads to peace, to harmony, to connectivity with the divine within us, to sharing things. So, Sat, Santok, Namrata, Seva, Prem Bhavna, that to use religion to create violence is a complete negation of the very basis of religion. So, thank you very much. I congratulate you. Thank you for the patience for listening.